came to give your life away my sin you have erased with your precious blood you showed your unfailing love and I will never be the same forever I am changed Jesus sit enthroned upon my with everything you are come live your life in me reign supremely I'm not just giving you my sin but everything within come take control and make me holy la 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 Son of God, you are the risen one. You came to overtake the grave. By the power of your name, you have raised me up with your conquering love and I will never be the same forever I am changed Jesus you are my king enthroned to be my everything my everything you are my king enthroned to be my everything my everything sit enthroned upon my heart with everything you are come live your life in me reign supremely I'm not just giving you my sin, but everything within. Come take control and make me holy. La 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 la. La.
Good morning, everyone. Let's pray. God, thank you for giving us today to worship. Help us to know that you are with us. Help us to praise you in our songs and our prayers. Speak to us your message for us today and help us hear it clearly. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. I keep fighting voices in my head that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I am falling short.
had asked me eight weeks ago what I knew about technology with regard to videoing and recording things, it would have been pretty minimal. Um, this is Beverly and I'm coming to you today in Mission Moment because I want to talk to you about the behind the scenes of what you're watching today, um, particularly the behind the scenes of the music, but actually pretty much everything. Let me tell you how our week starts. Um, Monday morning, uh, the worship team of Shelly and Pastor Eric and myself get together on Zoom and we determine what uh, the next couple of weeks are going to look like and begin to uh, make some assignments. Um, who's going to get in touch with this person? Who's going to um, record whatever's happening or video whatever's happening? And um, after about an hour and a half of working on a couple of weeks at a time, we uh, tend then to go our separate ways, um, often with the kind of, okay, I'm gonna make a couple phone calls now, um, and off we go. Each has some assignments and we work on those assignments, uh, knowing that by sometime late Friday, uh, we need to have everything in to Pastor Eric because he's the one who puts together the beautiful production that you see. Um, he's learned a lot too, as have I. And Shelly as well, we're always talking about, oh, we just found out you could do this. We just found out you could do that. So with regard to music, um, you've heard some music in the last few weeks from British Columbia. Erin Coughlin is back in British Columbia and she has sent some music. Um, you will be hearing in the near future uh, something from Jan Nyberg, our former uh, choir director, music director. You hear from Lois McLaughlin from her home. Terry and I have been recording uh, both in our home and in the empty church. Um, so kids out on the front porch playing their ukuleles, any number of things that you're hearing have come by way of us video recording and getting it to the right place in, uh, in a file so that Pastor Eric can put it all together. Um, there may be some other surprises that come about as well. Jane Perry uh, also sang for us uh, during National Day of Prayer and sent that song from Ontario. So um, the one thing that we are able to do is to have people involved who aren't necessarily sitting right here on the island and definitely not coming into our church building. So that's pretty cool. Now I do want to tell you that this kind of thing does not happen without incident. Um, there are a number of times uh, we have related to one another um, how we had to re-record something. Uh, we got tickled, we, it caused us to cry, it caught, you know, something occurred in the middle of it that um, was not suitable to show. So there are a number of, of things that happen. Uh, outtakes are relatively common. Um, some of them we erase immediately. Some of them I understand Miss Dawn may have gotten an entire uh, CD of some outtakes from some of uh, Brian and Shelly and Dawn's uh, escapades while doing some different videoing. So. Um, I, I know for a fact some of you saw in the mission moment that Nicole did the outtake when she got so tickled. Um, actually, she didn't outtake it, but she got so tickled when Paul accidentally knocked her off the bed that she couldn't continue. She was laughing so hard because um, <clears throat> she was videoing a story sitting on the bed, and I'm not sure how that incident happened, but it was pretty funny. We all laughed a lot as well. So um, there's a whole lot that goes into what you're watching. An hour and 10 minutes um, or so on a Sunday morning takes many of us much, much longer uh, to pull it off and to make it happen so that it's something that will be uh, edifying for you and hopefully will uh, help you to continue to worship even though it's a, a way we're not um, all 
very accustomed to. Um, and we don't know how much longer this is going to be occurring. But trust God, please, that as long as it is necessary, we will not only be continuing what we're doing, but we'll probably be learning new ways to do some of those things. Um, it is our pleasure to be able to provide music and to, um, to be able to provide you with some form of worship. Um, we're all open to suggestions if there are things you'd like us to do. Uh, we try to vary the services, and that's one of the things that we work at. Um, our worship committee meeting alone takes longer than what you're sitting watching because we're trying to continue to bury it. We're trying to continue to get people's faces out there in front of you, uh, faces that you know. We, we don't want it to just be Pastor Eric and Shelly and I in front of you. Um, we want you to, to know that there are, are people worshiping with you and um, we're continually thinking of new people. If you want to volunteer to help, give us a, a buzz. Call us, email us, text us. Um, we would love to have your help as well. So until next time, uh, I just want you to know that we are committed to providing the very best worship service we possibly can. It is our privilege. It is our joy. And we love you all so very much. to get to sing right now? Yeah. So will you, so, okay, but wait. So will you guys sing for everybody right yeah. now? Yeah. Let's do it, okay? Can I talk to you now? Can, can you tell me after we sing? Is it for me? me? No, right now. Go. Our, our dad called that. Yours our, is too, yours is a Ford too? Yeah, but. That's very cool. That's pretty ready? neat. Out. All right, so we are going to sing now. Are you ready? Yeah. Yes. All right. All right, so are you guys ready to do some singing? Yes. yes. All right. I didn't know. Stand up. Ready? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine
Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Um, this morning I'm here uh, in Wesley Hall at uh, what has become known as the Hungry Herd Cafe. And uh, it's where I've spent a bit of time over the last few years, which I've really enjoyed. But before I start the morning prayer, I wanted to send a special greeting to the pilot kids from Miss Diane and all the kitchen volunteers. We miss you all and uh, we look forward to a time when we can all get together. Okay. And uh, I have a meal together. But in the meantime, please um, stay well. You and your families all she will make the best. So I've been asked today to do the morning prayer. So without further ado. Dear Heavenly Father, we gather together today in an ever-changing fashion. We thank you for bringing us together and pray that you help us to enjoy this time. You help us to remember that life is not only about togetherness, but also about relationships. Help us also to enjoy the laughter, conversations, and memories made in new and unusual ways. Continue to be with us and encourage us to speak of your love, grace, and mercy to ourselves and others. God, with our worship today, we thank you for giving us this time to offer up gratitude for our families, our friends, neighbors, and others in our communities that love and support us. At this time and always, we are thankful for those who are tending to the frail and the sick. And allow us to take time to appreciate our own contributions to these same ends. Lord, these last months have been full of challenges for us, and we realize that there will be more to come. But during this time, we remember that you are a God who loves us, cares for us, heals us, forgives us, and gives us hope. In the lingering uncertainty of the coming months, give us peace and strength. And God, we thank you for the salvation and the opportunity of everlasting life, so that one day we will unite with you and those who have left before us. In recognition of these many things, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our trespasses. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. O Lord, lead us not into temptation, but save us from evil in the kingdom, the power in the glory forever will be yours. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. Today's scripture reading is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart. You know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
So thank you, Lily, for reading that scripture, Psalm 139. I It's one of my favorites. As I think back early in my childhood, it's one of the those scriptures that I first remember memorizing. And it has stayed with me up until this point, that this idea that that God has been with us from the very beginning, before we were born, before our, our, our bodies were formed in our mother's womb, God was there. I love thinking about that. And that leads us into this new series that we're doing called Marvelous Grace. And Marvelous Grace is, we're going to take, in, in this series, three weeks long, this week and two more weeks, we're going to talk about Wesley's, John Wesley, the fam, founder of Methodism. We're going to talk about the way, the threefold way he talks about grace. Now, from the very beginning, I want to talk about, I want to just make this clear. It's not three different kinds of grace. Sometimes we make that mistake, but it's not three kinds of grace. It's one grace, but we experience it in three different ways, or at least three different ways. Uh, three ways that uh, that John Wesley talked about and that Methodists have talk about, uh, talked about ever since. So I want to begin with some uh, just a basic statement about grace found in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, reading from the Common English Bible. You are saved by God's grace because of your faith. This salvation is God's gift. It's not something you possessed. It's not something you did that you can be proud of. So I want to point out a couple of things about this. First, uh, you are saved by God's grace. You're not saved because you're good. You're not saved because you've done all these wonderful things. You're not saved because you're just this uh, God's gift to the world, although you are. You're not saved because of that. You're saved because God's grace, because God loves you even before you're aware of it. So we're saved by God's grace and nothing else. It is God's gift. And we always, I know that you know that, and I have, I have to remind myself of that. Anytime I get kind of feeling a little good about myself and feeling puffed up, uh, feeling about my accomplishments, I remember that my life is always a gift. It's always a gift from God. You're saved by God's grace because of your faith. His salvation is God's gift. Number three, it's not something you possessed. And, and grace is not anything that we could ever possess or hold as our own or stake any claim to. It's always a gift. When it was given, when we realized it at first, it was a gift, but it's still every day. The, the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God is, is given to us every morning. We can't possess it. We just have to accept it over and over and over again. And then finally, it's not something that you did that you can be proud of because you didn't do it at all. God's grace came before your awareness of it, and it came uh, in spite of whatever merit you might have. And so we're going to talk about the, in this series, we're going to talk about the role of grace, three different roles of grace. Number one, grace prepares us for a relationship with God. It, it brings us to the place where we even want a relationship with God, because it's not something we would choose on our own. We're created for a relationship with God, but we stray. We, like Adam, always uh, seem to find our way wandering away from God. And so God's grace, first and foremost, prepares us to come to a relationship with us, Him. Uh, God redeems us. God meets us where we are, and He takes the mess that is our life and this is one of those moments where I especially miss being with you all. Because if I was with you, if we were all in the same room, I'd be asking you this question right now. But I'm just going to have to kind of assume the, the interaction uh, as I talk to a camera and hope that as you hear it, it's going to happen. But here's my question. How many of you have a life or have had a life, or suspect that maybe you're headed into a time of your life that's there, where there's a mess, an irredeemable mess. 
How many of you have ever felt that? I know that I've felt it. And there are still times when I feel it now. God is able to, by his grace, redeem our mess. Redeem our life. No matter how messed up, how screwed up we get, God can redeem it. That's the work of grace. We're going to talk about that most especially next week. God prepares us. God's grace prepares us. God's grace redeems us. God's grace shapes us into the, the people that we would be. The people that we're going to be as we grow in his grace, as we grow in our ability to trust him, as we grow in our ability to cooperate and participate and be a part of what God is doing in the world, to be used by God. We're shaped for that work by grace. And so these are the, the three things, the three roles of grace that, that Wesley talked about and that we as Methodists have talked about ever since. So for the rest of our time this morning, in just a few more minutes, we're going to talk about prevenient grace. Um, and it's the grace that is preparing us. We might even call it preparing grace. In fact, it has many different names, and we'll talk about those as we go along. But prevenient grace assumes this. The idea of our following Jesus was not our original idea. We didn't wake up one time when we were 5 years old or 12 years old or 26 or uh, 63 years old and say, you know, today is the day I'm going to start following God. And it was totally our idea. No. God works in our life to plant that idea. Now, I like to think about it in terms of this, uh, in Psalm 139, 16, it says, Your eyes saw my unformed body. God was there when we were conceived. God was, even be before we could were recognizable as a human being, God was at work in our life. God saw our, was part of, was participating in our creation and the becoming the people that we would be even before we were born. This is the work of prevenient grace. I always, when I think about prevenient grace, I always think of 1 John 4.10. This is love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us. God's love always comes first. Uh, one of my mentors early in my ministry gave me an image uh, for talking about this and it stayed with me and I use it over and over again. So uh, I just ask you to forgive me if you've heard this uh, a couple times before. But if you think about uh, a good caregiver or a good uh, nanny that takes care of a child, when that, first, when that caregiver comes into the person's life, there's not instant love. For that person. In fact, there might be skepticism. There might even be fear. A child might be afraid of a, a new stranger that is coming into their life. But what happens if that stranger in that caregiver is a wonderful caregiver? They take care of them. They, they provide for their needs. They have fun with them. They teach them. They do all these wonderful things with them. And over time, that child, that care receiver, because of the actions of the caregiver, begins to trust, even begins to have a fondness for that person. They smile when they come into the room. They begin to love that person, but it, that love was not even their own. They can't even take credit for it because they love that caregiver, they love that nanny, because the nanny first loved them. That's how God's grace works. God's grace is at work in our life, loving us, wooing us, taking care of us, providing for us from the very beginning. Even before we gave God a thought, God was doing all that for us so that we get the idea is that we eventually get to the place where we, we begin to trust, we begin to love, we begin to have an affection uh, for God. 
and we begin to move towards God. But we can't even take credit for doing that because it's because God loved us first. And that's what First John 4, 10 is saying. Another way that Wesley talked about this, this grace, is preventing grace. And that sound neg preventing uh, in our day and time is sometimes uh, a, a has a more negative uh, connotation. But the way that Wesley used it was um, that it's grace that goes before. Uh, and, and really, even to take our own understanding of preventing, it works. I think about John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever sh who shall ever shall, uh, believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That, that phrase, shall not perish, that word perish, is the same word that is used to describe rotting fruit perishable food, if you will. That's the connotation of that word. And so preventing grace is that grace that prevents our lives from going bad. Prevents our lives, prevents us from destroying ourselves because we tend to, as human beings, engage in self-destruction. And it is the work of preventing grace preparing grace, prevenient grace, grace that goes before that we learn another way of living, a, a, a way of living that leads to more life, life that really is life, abundant life, as John 10.10 10 says. And we've mentioned that scripture several times over the last several weeks. Abundant life, life that it really is life. So it's that preventing, preparing, prevenient grace of God that woos us to him, begins to get us to the point where we have this idea that we could love God, that we could return the love and grace of God by following him, by believing in him, by trusting our lives, submitting our lives, our will to God. And so all the things, all the people, all the places, all the experiences, all the coincidences help us realize that, that God was at work even before we realized it. So just think about that. Think about your own life. Who are the people in your life? Especially as you think about people that you just don't even know how they ended up being a part of your life, but you're so glad that they were. You're so glad they showed up. You're so glad that, that you have maybe a friend or more than one friend that's your friend and you don't even really realize how they became friends. But that friend has been so precious and has been a lifeline for you, have been a support for you in a time when maybe you just didn't know if you're going to make it. But God placed that person in your life, allowed that person to be in your life. And it is really the way in which God's grace was extended to you through the people in your life. There are places that work this way. Uh, every time I think about that, I think about the Grand Canyon. I went to the Grand Canyon when I was 13 years old and it changed my life forever. And anytime I wonder or I begin to experience doubts about my faith, I either see the picture of the Grand Canyon I have up on my wall over here, or I uh, look at the book of pictures, uh, and I just remember how tangible the presence of God was to me when I stood on the south rim of the canyon when I was 13 years old, and I realized <laughs> that God is real. <laughs> There's no way that God can't be real looking at this. So people and places can be a prevenient, preventing, preparing grace in your life. Experiences that you've had, uh, good experiences and difficult experiences, all as you begin to look back on them, you think, oh, man, that, that's prepared me for what I'm dealing with now. That thing that I had no idea why I had to go through it. Or that um, 
that teaching that really I was uh, just bored to tears and uh, I can't, I'm just amazed. I, I learned anything. And now for some reason, because I retained that, I'm prepared. This exp experiences that we have are also vehicles of grace in our life. Coincidences, things that we thought were just happened by chance. We look back on them and we think, well, oh, wait a minute. Maybe God was active in that. Maybe God was working in those coincidences. The truth is, God can use anything. As you, and, and as you think about people, places, experiences, coincidences, other things like that, you might even, it might even occur to you something else. In fact, it might be happening for you right now. You're thinking, in the midst of this pandemic, it's horrible and people are dying and people are suffering and all kinds of horrible things are happening. But I can't help but think that I'm getting something from God because we're going through all this. It isn't that God caused all these horrible things to happen, but God is active in them and teaching us, showing us, wooing us, drawing us towards him. I think there are going to be a lot of people that look back to this time in the world, in the life of the world, and ring. That was the time when I learned to trust God for the for for the things that I need. I learned to trust God for the first time during the pandemic of 2020. That's the work of preventing, preparing, prevenient grace. On the United Methodist website, uh, another. Uh, image for this kind of grace or this t this way of experiencing grace uh, I love the image it goes like this if grace is a home and I I love the image of grace being our home the home that God has given for us and prepared for us pr provided for us if grace is the home that God has prepared for us for then Prevenient grace is the porch. It's that inviting in. It's that welcome. It is that wooing. Come on in. This is where you belong. Come on up here. And then next, next week we're going to talk about the doorway. So I hope you kind of got what we're talking about when we talk about this preparing, preventing, Prevenient grace. What do we do with this? What, what does it matter that we are learning this about grace? And I would suggest at least two things. Number one, it's a way to th look back on our life and literally see the fingerprints of God on our life up until this point. And so you can do that. You can think about the people that God has placed in your life. You can think about the experiences you've had. You can think about the places where you've gone and they've those, just being in those places has have an, had an impact on you. And maybe uh, it was even that God was showing you something that you wouldn't have seen if you hadn't been in that place. Or the coincidences that are happening in your life. Or maybe it's something else. But the idea is we can look back on our life and literally see that God has been at work from the very, very beginning. And this idea of grace, uh, this preparing role in our life, we can cooperate with that in God's work and grace towards other people. We can help others see that. You know, when somebody's going through something, we can say, hey, maybe I just, and I do this sometimes by asking a question. Somebody shares with me something's going on in their life, and instead of suggesting what I think it might be, mean because most of the time I'm going to be wrong. I'll admit that. I'll own that. So I, instead, I'll just ask the question. I'll say, is it possible that in the circumstances of your life right now, what, whatever it is, you know, that thing that you've just shared with me, is it possible that there's a message there that you need to hear, that there's a truth that you need to see? I, I don't I might have an idea about it, but it doesn't matter what my idea about it is. What's your idea? What do you think 
might be the message there. Sometimes I'll use the God language, but depending on where they are in their faith, but sometimes I won't. I'll just say, is there something maybe you need to see or hear, some truth you need to acknowledge there? Because whether we acknowledge God or not, it is God. It's that work of preparing grace. And so we can kind of use this concept of grace to help others see God's work in their life as well. So I want to bring this to a close right now. And before we talk about um, the next role of grace in our life next week, I just want to make this invitation. I, I want to invite you to think about this week the ways in which God has been active in your life up until this point, up until this moment. Who are the people that maybe you've asked yourself, why were these people in my life? Why did I have the parents that I had? The brothers and sisters, uncles, aunts, all, all, all those kinds of things. Why were these people in my life? Is there something that I can discern from all of that? Is there a message that's kind of woven through all of it? What are the places that have meant an awful lot to you? And, and why is it that they mean so much? Why is it that, that they seem to evoke so much in you? Is there something that you could see or truth that you could acknowledge in the places that have been a part of your life? Is there something that you can acknowledge in the, the coincidences? Is there something less coincidental and maybe more miraculous going on in those circumstances, those experiences in your life? How has this grace that is preparing you for a life with God? How is this grace that has been preventing your life from being ruined or from perishing been at work in your life? How is this grace that goes before, this prevenient grace, been wooing you onto the porch and saying, come on in. This is where you belong. God is saying to you, this is where you belong. You belong in a relationship with me. And if you'll just come on in, step through the door, you will experience what it means for your soul, your spirit, your heart to be at home in grace. So I thank you for being a part of this. We, um, I'm going to pray now. And then I'm going to, we're going to sing, we're going to close by singing a wonderful hymn of the church that talks about this preparing prevenient grace. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. He's inviting us to come on in, come on home. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this time that we've had to think about your grace at work in our life. Lord, there has never been a moment from the time that we were two cells coming together, that you haven't been active in our life. Whether we've ever realized that or acknowledged that before, help us to acknowledge it now. Help us to know that it was you. It was you and all those people in our lives. It was you in those places. It was you in those experiences. It was you in those coincidences. It's been you all along, Lord. It's been your grace, your love, wooing us. Help us to, to take a step forward today in our trust of you. Help us to come up onto the porch and see that we found our way home, this home that we can make in your grace, this home that you've prepared for us in your grace. Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we continue to worship you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Comfort you, amen. 